Hello chess programmers. How can we represent the chess board inside the program? If you've never seen a chess board before, you have one here. There are many, many ways to represent the chess board, and we will just look at a few of them. Number one may be the most obvious one, where we use rows. Uh, we, we have an, uh, two index, rows and columns. And for instance, to fill that board with uh, pieces, we have values for pieces, for instance, 6 for, for the rook, hexadecimal 6, 4 for the knight, and uh, 0 for the pawn. And we just put them in, for instance, uh, a rook on board 0, 0, that is a1, and 0, 1 is b1, 1, 0 is a2. We just follow the coordinates in the board. So if we want to make all the bishop moves up to the right, then we have this uh, nested loops, loop over all the rows and over all the columns, one to each column and each row. To have this nested loop is inefficient and it's better to use a one-dimensional board with 64 squares. And now we fill the board with just uh, one index. So the rook will go to square uh, number 0. The knight on b1 will go to square number 1. And the pawn on a2 is square number 8. And we have this uh, e5 square 36. It's empty. So if we look at the board here. So the rook down there to the left is the square a1 but with one index is the square zero and the knight on b1 is square one and then we come to the next row that pawn is on square eight and e5 was square 36 right and we go all the way up to 63 and if we want to make the bishop move up to the right we have this problem with coming outside the board we add nine to each square to move upwards when we add nine we come we we move on the diagonal diagonal upward uh, but we don't know when we are outside the board of course we can fix that in different ways but there is something to solve we need to solve that. For instance, we can translate one square to the two index numbers. But in that case, we didn't really gain anything from using only one dimension. But we can solve that. In the next type of board we have here is 120 squares. But what we are doing is to make a frame around the actual board so we have 12 rows and 10 squares 12 rows and 10 squares on every row so there is a frame around the actual board and now we can put uh, for instance uh, hexadecimal 99 and that means outside the, the board and uh, if we put a rook on a1 okay we need another index just to find where we are on the board but that's peanuts and um, okay uh, we say uh, hexadecimal ff is empty so e5 is empty okay here, here is the board uh, in a visual way and there is no need to to comment on my drawing skill here so just look at the board. The board is framed by these gray squares, and the gray, uh, gray squares have a value, let's say uh, hexadecimal 99. And when we reach a square value, value like that, we know we are outside the board and cannot move that more. Now when we move the bishop 
upwards. Okay, we need to add 11 instead. Instead, when we reach hexadecimal 99, a square with that value, we know, okay, now we are outside the board, so we can stop, stop moving in that diagonal. It's a quite handy way of, of solving the problem, being outside the board. Bishops, queens, rooks have the same problem. Uh, and knights, they all have the same problem with outside the board. But with this kind of frame, it's solved for all of them. Okay, but there is another way to represent the board that we are going to use. Okay, so take a look at the bitboard solution. A bitboard is 64 bits. And we say this is an unsigned in 64 bits. So the first one here, W pieces, white pieces, has one on each position where there is a white piece. And other bits are set to zero. And for black pieces, okay, it's the black pieces that have one. And other pieces have zero on the corresponding squares. And of course we can do this, we can have bitboards for each piece if we want. We can have bitboards for threatened squares or many different things that we can use bitboards for. And these bitboards can be manipulated in different ways. We are using bitwise operations, so this not white pieces that not character changes every bit that is 1 to 0 and every bit 0 to 1. So it's a bitwise uh, manipulation. Manipulation. When we do like this we get all the squares with not white pieces. And we can have we can have empty squares and that is white pieces, bitwise or with black pieces that is actually all pieces, right? Not empty, empty squares. That is all pieces. And if we put the not all pieces, we get all the empty squares. We will use the bitboards uh, technique together with the 64 index board with one index. And in combination, bitboards and this six, 64 ints. So the next time we will start to implement these types of board, our internal board representation. Take good care, it's cool outside today, at least here in Sweden. Bye bye.